What's up guys? I hope you're well. Today we're checking out Fred Didna Laddering a Chimney Part 1 and 2. Let's get into it, shall we? Hmm. Well, basically this is sort of a packing that keeps the ladder off the wall of the chimney so there's room for your boots to go through, you know, on the rungs of the ladder. There's two schools of thought in this. One that, the, you know, tying them on with string is time consuming and all that, which it is. But the thing is, when it's when it's being pulled up the side of the chimney, um, you know, by my mate here, it, it, and it bangs against something, it only busts the string, you know. Like the other school of thought is have a metal construction that's mm -hmm. bolted, bolted to the ladder, which when that hits an iron band or something like that, it busts the bloody ladder, you see. String is cheaper than brand new ladders. So, but it does take a bit of time for tie them all on. Yeah, that's the only problem. Hey. Very right. true. Hey. It's going to be just underneath the third rung, so there's room for your boots. Mm. <laughs> They've just got to be just underneath the third rung, so there's room for your boots there. If you tie it on there, it's amazing how it gets in way. Yeah. Um, you know, it's in the wrong shop because there's no room for your for your feet. Yeah, basically that piece of wood is, is just to put there to hold the ladder off the wall. Here we are drilling the first hole in in you know which is is the there is an hole actually there that's just been pointed up to knock in the first dog, which will be the the all fast at the at the base of the first ladder as you might say then it's interesting to see how much work he puts into just getting the ladder secure like most of the other clips all the other clips i've seen it's already in place like you had no idea like the time he put into it the 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 effort he put into it the thought he put into it it's very fascinating goes the plug wood which, as you can see, it doesn't go in very far, you know, but it's quite far enough, you know, it's quite safe. Um, and that's what's termed as a dog. Then uh, I'm going to knock in, in now, uh, knock in, in now. And the next stage is to the piece of rope, it's called a lashing, and it's a piece of rope about five foot long with a loop spliced on one end, as you can see. Um, the next stage is to prop up a ladder and climb up it as though you were going up to clean the bedroom window and then about five feet from the top of that ladder mm -hmm. you drill another hole but in our case the hole's already there you drill another oh, hole oh that's lucky as plumbing straight above the one below yeah, as you can get it are, yeah um and insert another piece of plug wood and another dog mm. Absolutely insane, man. You just gonna stand there all day or gonna help? <laughs> what the hell, man? As you get a bit higher up, the holes have a tendency to get a bit deeper. Mm -hmm. I think it's called fear. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's it. Here you see the first ladder is, is in position and I'm about to tie it onto the bottom dog or the bottom hole fast. Um, which, uh, you know, that's where the beer belly comes in handy. Um, <laughs> round the, right. oop, round the <laughs> side of the cheek of the ladder, under the rung, round the oop, round the other cheek of the ladder, round that's the rung funny. and then back round the, the, the rung below and a 12 inch on and that's got it fast it will not come off and the thing to do also is use as much of the rope up as you can because in a gale the ends start to blow about and and the whipping comes off the end of the rope and then you've got one with like a cat of nine tails end on it you know blowing about in the wind mm. 
That is the pulley wheel to pull up the next ladder. Here, yeah, the next operation is to tie the the ladder to the top dog or the top hole fast that you've just knocked in without tying it to the haulage rope, you know, because you sometimes if you're not paying attention or you're trying to talk to somebody who's mithering you on the floor, they you end up lapping it around. You see how easy it would be yeah. to lap it around the haulage rope. Yeah, that's it. That is now, the bottom ladder is now firmly fixed and nice. as good as it'll ever be to the wall of the chimney. That is and absolutely freaking insane, is to climb man. Climb up to the top of that ladder and sit to stride the top iron rung and reach up as far as you can and drill another hole in the brickwork, which, of course, it's very easy for me here because having done this thing about seven times before and used exactly the same holes every time. That's, that's I know genius. exactly how far I'm reaching and where I'm going and it's quite an easy operation to keep the wall stack of ladders in a in a in a very straight line. Wow. If you're putting them up and you wander towards one side, when you're putting the staging up at the top and you've got one ladder that's maybe two foot gone a bit sideways and say the other one's gone the other way, yeah. it looks rather an erratic effort at the top. You know, everything's out of line and out of square. Now we've drilled the, the hole approximately five feet above the top of the bottom ladder and hooked on the pulley wheel. Now this is where the tricky bit comes in. The second yeah. ladder is tied on approximately nine rungs from the top, which is about midway. And of course, when it when it's being pulled up by the labourer or the man down below, we, we lose more or less half a ladder yeah. uh, of a lap, which you'll see the reason for this shortly. The thing is, as that ladder comes up, or the second ladder comes up, on the bottom rung of it, there are two lashings, one of which I'm using now to tie the bottom rung to the nearest corresponding rung of the ladder that's stuck to the wall. I've got the other lashing round my neck and the two steeplejack hooks which have come up with it are stuck in my belt. Um, no, this makes now, sense. Uh, that's a secondary sort Even of safety precaution. The one with just a clovitch round the side. a lot of sense for safety. Just in case. The, 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 that hook there that I've got my hand on, or the one that the pulley's on, if that happened to come out, I'd still be in with a chance, you know, the, the, the ladder would still be connected with two hooks to the bottom one. As you can see, it's slightly precarious there, how it shakes about, but once you've lashed it to that top hook, which is five foot above the bottom ladder, mm -hmm. you've only got about six rungs above that are standing in free space, or what you might call unconnected to the chimney. It is now possible to unhook the pulley wheel and carry it up the back side of the ladder and hook it on the top iron rung while you use one of the dogs that's stuck in your belt uh, to, you know, get another purchase five foot higher up still, you see. Yep. And once you've drilled that hole and put the dog in, you can lift up the pulley wheel onto the dog, which, of course, one end of the rope is still attached to the ladder that you, you were sat on. Yeah. And then you'll see in a minute where they, when I come down and untie that ladder, my man at the bottom pulls and up goes the wall 21 pins of the ladder onto the top of the bottom ladder, which sounds unbelievably complicated, but it is quite a simple operation, really. Fascinating. So in fact, cool. it's so simple. You can do on a good chimney on a good day where it isn't windy, and you don't manage to thump the hell out your hand with the hammer. Like, you know, I mean, if you miss with the hammer, it's rather painful. Um, there goes the pulley wheel. Down the ladder. Part two should start after this. Um, untie the lashing at the top that's holding the top of the ladder. Now it all comes loose and flops about in the wind. This is the <laughs> dodgy bit when it's very windy and you're three quarters of the way up and the wind's trying to snap the ladder off sideways. Yeah. Uh, it's quite exciting. Um, 
and there's the Exciting. secondary lashing on the side and then finally the one at the bottom uh, when you've released it at the bottom it's at the mercy of the man on the floor and the wind sometimes it's rather awkward when it's very windy and and the and the ladders start twisting round the rope you know that's pulling the thing up No, it's now in the right Our position tool. for fixing onto the onto the sockets at the bottom, and of course you see how close to the the, the top of the, the you know it's being held against the wall mm -hmm. by the man on the floor. Very important that the man on the floor is uh, you've got his wall concentration all the time. You know that's why it's better using an older man than a younger man who has a tendency to wander off looking at ladies skirts and things like that <laughs> right because if he disappears you fall off yeah that's the second ladder up and <laughs> that's what it's all about <laughs> wow well, almost up a little loose but you'll get it tied in there bud This method of laddering factory chimneys is quite a recent sort of invention, you know, like mm. 1870s period. A bit before then, they actually flew kites uh, to get string across the tops of chimneys, you know, right, weird situation. Wow. I think on, when they were, you know, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, when they started to erect chimney stacks, nobody gave it a great deal of thoughts as to how they were going to get I up there they to, kites. to further things. Holy crap. Because, of course, they were all built from the inside, more or less right from the beginning of building fairly large ones to to them building the really monstrous things that there are today at power stations. Like the, the early ones, you know, 1820s, were only like 60 and 50 feet high. Yeah. And of course, you know, they could build them with a conventional scaffold around the outside because mm -hmm. they were a no great girth, you know, to circumnavigate the wall of that chimney, which might be 60 odd feet circumference with scaffolding that's is insane. going to cost a heck of a lot of money. You know, that's why I think steeplejacks have still got a can earn, still earn a crust of bread. You know, um, it is one of the good and reliable ways of getting up there, you know. Jeez, holy shit, dude. That's just insane how he does it, but it's like... It's insane, but it's really, like, not that complicated, I guess. That's a good way to say it. Oh, whoa. Basically, having got the second ladder up, you've, you've more or less conquered it, in a way, the, how you actually do the job. The thing oh. is, you just keep repeating the process nine rungs from the top two lashings on the bottom and two dogs and up it comes and all as you're up there with is your hammer your chisel the plug wood and the end of the or the pulley wheel and the and the rope see the important I mean... thing not to do is let let the rope run through the block and go tumbling down which means that you've got it's to like come down and get the highly end of the rope and technologically carry the thing up, technical it's which just old 200 school. foot of m rope is fairly heavy Beautiful. and by the time you've got back to the top with it you're getting a bit out of breath the, the other thing is the higher up you get and the harder it gets you know because of course the, the guy at the bottom has got to pull the ladder up further oh. and you've got to send the end of the rope <laughs> down further um, and also it, it, the progression uh, towards the top as you get higher is it, it slows down a bit oh yeah I can definitely understandable this definitely basically it. is a, a, an inspection uh, to, to give a quote for any forthcoming repairs that, that need sorting out um, the over the years the first job I ever did were above the collar, the, the 10 feet of brickwork above the collar. I uh, put some new iron bands around and, uh, and pointed it all and a new lightning conductor rod. Then on nice. subsequent visits, I pointed all the panel work around the top 30 feet 
uh, and now from the the sailing course below that to uh, below the green and white banded area of tile bricks, it's badly in need of pointing. So uh, I'm going to give them an estimate to um, just to whistling do that. away while he works. <sighs> Love it. Hey. That's a bit of old-time Steeple Jack's plugwood, you know. If we knock that in there, it'll be dead and gone. <laughs> Without a doubt. He always Quite talks rotten, about that, when know. I'm dead and gone. It's funny. These patches I pointed up, they, they uh, were some very poor quality Steeple Jack's damaged the brickwork, you know. Uh, ah. Didn't know how to work an hammer and chisel. It's always policy to leave the ladders there until you've come to the financial arrangement with the management right. uh, about whether they're going to have it, have it done or not, uh, which saves you having to put the ladders up again. Yeah. The, the thing is that having secured the contract, if we're going to do it, uh, it, it, it we've then got to put what's termed as a staging around the top. Wow, he was only halfway up then. Okay. Jeez. Looks like he's almost to the Yep, he's almost there. You hear it how it's ad addled. Oh, you know. It's a shame, really. Hmm. <laughs> Getting near the top, it's always like that, you know. Wow. Looks like it's I've got multi multi day process. I don't know. Let me know in the comments how long of a process this usually is. The camera guy's in a. I think crane. this time a few iron bands might be called for you know, to screw it together a bit. Bit of me pointing come out up there on them big copings. Can you see it? Six mm -hmm. inches off the lightning conductor. Not bad that though, it's a long time since I did it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. Could never do this job. It goes way too high. But he's got balls of steel, so or he had balls of steel. Incredible. Some of them are loose. <laughs> oh, no. It's, it's a trifle handled around that area. I don't think the full nine-inch headers, they're only halves, you know. Well, an header is a, a brick on end, like, like that should be. Yep. But I don't think it is. They wouldn't, they wouldn't sound as holler if it were a full nine-inch brick going in. It's yep. only half of one. Yeah. I think. I'm only surmising. <laughs> oh man, it goes beyond vertical. Oh no. Wow. Can you can I just get the crane and <laughs> take me up there, please? Thank you. These are my dog holes that support my scaffold when I'm you know, when I'm putting the scaffolding up. Mm -hmm. uh, When you sat on top of there, like King of the Castle, mm -hmm. the view used to be quite interesting in this area. There were numerous collieries, uh, which uh, the last of which disappeared a few months ago, mm -hmm. uh, and lots and lots of mill chimneys, and I think you can see about four left now uh, out of all of them, uh, out of dozens and dozens. I was about to ask, how Not many are left far away, uh, the today? Paris Church of Amberton, is... which has got a distinct Curious list question. on it through the mining subsidence. Ah, uh, well, that's it now. We've nearly conquered it. 
Almost there, Almost buddy. Almost there, so the Iger. <laughs> wow. <sighs> Just remarkable to think how these were built. Holy shit. <laughs> nope. <laughs> that's a, uh, that's a, that's a nope for me. Um, would never see me do that. Never, ever, ever. Um, no. <laughs> Too high for me, but, uh, fascinating watching him put the, uh, the, the ladders up on the chimney, like don't really think about it watching his other videos like whatever one's coming up now but uh yeah it's mind-blowing uh the time the effort the thought he put into just laddering the chimney to get up to do the repairs or as we can see on this next one coming up demolition but uh yeah with that being said i want to thank you all for watching stay safe and be careful on ladders bye